Yursus Arctos Horribilis, the grizzly bear. Even their name sounds intimidating. They are a type of brown bear, and scientists notoriously argue about their genetic classification. I learned a lot while researching for this video, especially since grizzly bears are not a population I have worked with. We are going to learn more about the grizzly bear, compare them to the black bear, which we talked about in an earlier video, and explore why they are such a valuable species versus a horrendous monster. It's amazing that when these bears are born, they weigh less than two pounds. Adult males average 700 pounds or 315 kilograms and females 600 pounds. However, they can range from 200 to 1,000 pounds depending on their sex and location. The farther north you go, the bigger the bears get. Grizzlies in northern Alaska need six months worth of fat to allow them to hibernate through the long winter. Same for polar bears. They can reach nine feet tall when standing. One way to tell a grizzly from a black bear is the massive hump over the shoulder blades. The hump is made of muscle, not fat, and is attached to the backbone. One reason why they are such fabulous diggers and can tear things apart. A grizzly bear can also be identified by its rump, which is lower than its shoulders. Grizzlies have a fabulous sense of smell, 20 times stronger than a bloodhound. Grizzly bears can look pretty scary, and rightfully so. They have huge jaws with 42 teeth that include large canines. This makes sense because they need to, their teeth to catch fish and tear apart their prey, such as elk and bison. They also have large back molars so they can grind up the vegetation they eat. Grizzlies have a bite force of 975 pounds, second only to the polar bear. They have front claws between two and four inches long. Bear claws are not retractable. They are used for digging roots and dens or catching salmon. Basically, they act as a multi-purpose tool. Grizzlies are wicked fast and have been clocked at Yellowstone going 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour. Speaking of salmon, maybe this bear doesn't even need his claws. The fish are coming right to him. Bears are smart and know where and when the salmon will be coming up the river. Salmon aren't the only fish they hunt. Trout and bass are also popular prey. Grizzlies will walk along the bottom of the river and look underwater for the fish. They will also dig for razor clams. Despite their penchant for fishing, bears are omnivores and eat a variety of foods. They will hunt mammals, often going for the young and old who are easier to catch. They also eat carrion, dead animals. Those that live by the coast have been seen eating dead whales that have washed up. Like the black bear, they love berries, nuts, and tree fruits. Grizzly bears can be found in a wide variety of ecosystems, including alpine meadows and prairies. In many habitats, they prefer, prefer riparian areas along rivers and streams. These areas also have a lot of berries to forage. Scientists have done studies on the scat of bears to find out what they are eating. I was surprised to learn that grizzly bears will graze. In some locations, 70% of the diet is made up of plants. Digging of plant materials helps the soil exchange nitrogen and nutrients. Grizzlies also carry prey around with them. Between decaying prey and their feces, they add nutrients to alpine meadows. Female grizzlies are called sows and typically have twins, but anywhere from one to four is common. Cubs are born during hibernation, weighing less than two pounds, and they will stay with mom about two and a half years. 
Grizzlies are wonderful and protective mothers, and rare attacks on humans have often arisen because of the mother's perceived danger to the cubs. Grizzlies have a low reproduction rate, one of the reasons their population declines quickly when faced with habitat loss and human predation. In addition, females don't reach sexual maturity till age five. Brown bear's lifespan is about 25 years in the wild. Contrary to popular belief, grizzlies can climb trees, even adults, and the young often use this tactic to escape aggressive older male bears. Cougars and wolf packs may also try to snatch a young cub. The gestation period for grizzly bears is approximately 180 to 250 days. It varies widely due to environmental factors. The embryo typically doesn't implant till the mom reaches a healthy weight and is hibernating. The cubs stay with mom until they are two and a half years old when they typically separate from their mother. In areas with little food, the cubs may stay with their mother longer. Grizzlies often leave leftovers while they are eating. This provides food for other species. In the case of salmon, birds such as gulls and ravens, in addition to smaller mammals like fox and mink, enjoy the bear's sloppy eating habits. Grizzlies basically live in pretty rural areas. They desire to avoid humans. Most humans who live in the Northwest never see a grizzly in the wild. Typically, people visit a national park to get a glimpse of these big bears. Many people fear grizzlies, and rightly so, but actually attacks average about 12 per year, with two of those being fatal. These are usually surprise incidents, with the majority being females with cubs. The National Park Service has information about protecting yourself in bear country. Obviously, you should follow their guidelines and take precautions while in wilderness areas. The fencing here is keeping the bears out. Fencing is used to protect people's homesteads who live in bear country. In addition, some parks have fencing around popular tourist areas. Some fences are electrified to add an additional layer of protection. Historically, grizzly bears occupied much of the western United States. Loss of habitat and hunting has reduced their range and population. There are also brown bears in Europe and northern Asia. About 60,000 grizzlies live in North America, with half of them being in Alaska. Most of the others live in British Columbia and Alberta, Canada. In the lower 48, grizzly bears are threatened and hunting is not allowed. Alaska allows regulated hunting of grizzly bears each year. A mere 1,000 brown bears live in the lower 48. One problem is the lack of genetic diversity, and we can see that the bears are often cut off from each other. This is one of the reasons they are considered a threatened species in the continental U.S. The northern Cascade Mountains in Washington state have fewer than 25 grizzly bears and the United States Fish and Wildlife Service has planned a long-term reintroduction program in that area. As we know, introduction creates a lot of angry politics between residents, especially farmers, and environmentalists. The Native American population has also weighed in. In an article in Field and Stream, which I will link below, Scott Schuler of the Upper Skagit Tribe was quoted as saying, Our people and the grizzly bear coexisted for 10,000 years here before the first Europeans came into this area. Fish and Wildlife officials will release three to seven captured grizzlies into the North Cascade per year with the goal of establishing an initial population of 25 bears. The biggest predator of any bear species will always be humans. Roads pose an imminent threat to the grizzly habitat today and increase the fracturing of the population. 
protecting the grizzly bear protects other species as well. Grizzly bears add value to their environment, whether it's increasing fertility of the soil or controlling prey populations or leaving nutrients behind for other animals, they play an important part in the food web. Scientists refer to brown bears as an umbrella species. This is because they benefit other plant and animal species. Bears need room to roam, so many conservation groups purchase land to leave undeveloped. This will hopefully reduce habitat fragmentation and give bears space to lead natural lives. Thanks so much for listening. Please like and subscribe so other people interested in educational wildlife content will find my channel. Have a wonderful, fabulous day.